Hey guys, Corey with Palmetto Battery Pros, and today we're going to be doing a lithium conversion on a club car onward, and it's going to be a similar installation to a club car precedent. We are going to be installing the Bolt Energy USA 51 volt 160 amp hour lithium golf cart battery. So stick around and we'll go through it step by step. As always, put your key in the off position and put your golf cart in tow. Next, go ahead and remove your lead acid batteries and completely clean out the battery compartment. Once the battery compartment is clean, we're going to do a little modification and go ahead and address the solenoid. So go ahead and trim this piece of plastic in the battery compartment so the wiring harnesses that are coming in can sit flat on the bottom. You may also need to cut out the plastic ridge in the center of the tray. Next, using your T30, remove this torque screw, which will allow you to gain access to the panel where the controller and solenoid are. Go ahead and take a picture of your solenoid because when we replace it, we're going to hook the new one up the same way the old one came out. For this cart, you will not need to use a diode and Bolt actually stopped supplying the diode. So please uh, just look past that. You're going to run the light blue small wire. You, you may have to trim it and put an eyelet on it. But uh, you're going to put that to the battery positive side. And the blue and white will go on the controller side. And then you will hook everything else back up the same way. The controller side of the solenoid goes to the B positive port on your controller. And the other side is the B positive, which will go to the positive post on your battery. At this point, using your half inch wrench or socket, go ahead and remove the nut on the B negative post on the controller. And anything running to the old charge receptacle is grounded there and you can go ahead and disregard, uh, disconnect and, and get rid of it. Okay, here is a final shot of my controller and solenoid all hooked up and ready to go. And just be careful with your wire management when you go to put everything back together and reinstall the access panel. So the Bolt Energy 160 amp hour battery is going to take up the majority of the compartment. So before we put the battery in, we're going to want to go ahead and get everything else squared away. So using your self-tapping screws, go ahead and secure the 12 volt reducer and the onboard charger to the battery tray. And this is probably about the only space that you're going to be able to fit it. And if you are adding a 12 volt fuse block, I would go ahead and do that now as well. Now we can go ahead and set our mounting brackets in place. So make sure you have enough room forward and back. So when you set the battery in place, the, uh, you have access to the run tow switch. And the passenger side bracket is going to go all the way back to the, and it's going to sit right against the side as far as you can get it uh, to the passenger side. And then you'll want to nut and bolt it down to the bottom of the tray. Once you have the passenger side bracket mounted to the cart, go ahead and measure 31.25 inches from the center mounting holes of the passenger bracket. And that is going to be the other side of the bracket. So it's going to be 31.25 inches from center mounting hole to center mounting hole. You can also use the center slot in the bracket uh, to kind of secure it down, um, maybe with a self tapping screw and washer just enough. So if you want to, you know, with you and a buddy, if you want to grab the battery, kind of sit it in place and be able to slide the bracket forward and back. Um, that way you know exactly where you need the bracket to be and then you can go ahead and secure it down. So it's going to be very important that you keep all of your wiring harnesses as low to the battery tray as possible. And then also the side ridge piece of plastic here, the battery will basically sit down on it. So make sure there's no wires over that piece of plastic. 
and uh, just really get everything down low and you're going to hide all the excess wire and everything down underneath the space between the battery and the battery tray. So now that we have everything installed, we can go ahead and start running wires up to the dash. And I really like to use the space between the battery compartment and the shell of the golf cart. So I'll run everything behind the battery compartment and around. And to do that, we're going to need to remove this piece of trim here. So using your T30, go ahead and remove these two top torque screws. Next, using your T40, remove the two torque screws on each side of the cart that hold this piece of trim in place. Next, you can go ahead and pull your mat back or remove it. Then using your T40, remove the three torque screws that hold this bottom piece of trim on. And then with something flat or some trim pullers, pop the cover over the old charge receptacle. Next, you can remove this piece of trim. Now we can go ahead and install the AC port and cover onto this piece of trim. So this is how it sits in there. So we'll go ahead and secure the mounting plate to the piece of trim using some self-tapping screws. And then with the provided screws, we will mount the AC port to the plate. Then we'll fish the back side of the AC port uh, through and into the battery compartment. Go ahead and plug the provided extension cable into the charger input. And then you can plug that into the back side of the charge receptacle. The club car onward has an OEM 12 volt reducer for lights and accessories. The blue and the black wires on this factory wiring harness is the 48 supply to the OEM voltage reducer. We will extend them and put them to the battery terminals. For a club car precedent, this factory harness is the 12 volt supply for the lights. And we would extend these and connect them to the output of the 12 volt reducer. This is the 12 volt reducer wiring harness. And I'll quickly run through it. The yellow and black is the 48 volt supply. We're going to extend them, put an eyelet on it, and run them to the main positive and negative post in our battery. The red is your 12 volt supply, and we're going to run that to our fuse block. Next is the light blue, and we're going to be extending this wire, running it up to the dash and attaching it to the cold side of the key switch. And the last wire is the dark blue and is the constant for a stereo receiver. Plug the 12 volt reducer wiring harness into the reducer. So now that we've extended and run the light blue wire up to the dash, we are going to use a POSI tap or a dual spade connector to tie it in to the cold side of the key switch. That way when the customer turns the key switch into the on position, the 12 volt supply is activated. This customer has an aftermarket dash and there's no good place to put the LCD meter. So I used a vertical bracket and secured it to the bottom of the dash. And then I put a small hole right behind it to uh, kind of hide the wiring harness as I ran it back up into the dash and I'll run the LCD wiring harness from the dash down here and I'll secure it to existing wiring harnesses and run it back along here and around back into the battery compartment. Using your T30, remove the two screws that hold the dash panel in place and there's also a T15 up top. Once you remove those three screws, you can pop your dash and access the back. Locate a good spot for your LCD screen and using a 2 inch or 2 and 1 16th hole saw, go ahead and make a perfect hole and slide your LCD screen in place. Install the LCD bracket and secure it to the dash with the two provided screws. This customer has several 12 volt accessories so we installed a 12 volt fuse block. You can see here, this is the red from the 12 volt reducer wiring harness, giving the block 12 volts. And then on the negative side, we are going to ground it at the battery negative terminal. And here you can see all of the positive side from our 12 volt accessories are hooked up to the fuse. And then we have all of our grounds here at the bottom. So now when the key switch is in the on position, the 12 volt supply will activate and all the accessories will get 12 volts and they'll also be protected by the fuses. Once you have everything squared away at the dash, you can go ahead and put everything back together and put all your trim back in place, tighten everything down and do some final wire management 
and then we're going to be ready to put the battery in place. So go ahead and set the battery on the brackets and using the provided hardware, go ahead and tighten them down to the brackets. It is a very secure mount. Now we can go ahead and hook everything up to our battery. And the first thing we're going to do is insert the Bluetooth receiver into the BT port. And um, it comes with a magnet on the back, so you can just attach it anywhere to the top of the battery. The next item is our LCD wiring harness that we ran up to the dash and plugged into our LCD meter. The other side's going to screw into the data port on the battery. Next, we can move to the positive terminal and get everything there. Go ahead and grab the charger output connection piece and plug it in to the output wire of the charger. And it has two eyelets on it. The brown is positive and the blue is negative. So starting with the positive terminal, we're going to go smallest to biggest, biggest touching the post. Our smallest item is our 48 volt supply to the 12 volt reducer. Next is the brown from our charger connection piece. And the final item is the main positive cable. Go ahead and get those to the post, tighten them down using your 13 millimeter wrench. Torque it down tight, not too tight, no wiggle room. After that, we can move on to the negative side. Again, smallest to biggest. And the smallest item is going to be the 48 volt supply for our 12 volt reducer. Next is going to be the ground for our 12 volt fuse block. After that is the negative from our charger connection. And lastly is the main negative cable, which runs to the B negative post on your controller. And same thing, get those to the terminal, tighten them down, torque them down. After that, you can do some wire management with the provided green zip ties. Now we're going to test the cart for operation. The first thing we're going to do is turn the battery on by pushing the power button and it will illuminate. The LCD meter will come to life. Next, put your cart and run. Turn your key switch on. Then put your cart in forward or reverse and lightly hit the accelerator. Okay, now that we have cart operation, um, you can see the state of charge is pretty low, so we're going to go ahead and run a max charge on this battery. Using a heavy-duty extension cord, go ahead and plug it into the AC port. This will activate your onboard charger, and it will kick on and run a complete charge cycle and shut off when finished. All right, now we have card operation and the battery is fully max charged and we're ready to get this uh, vehicle back to the customer. He's going to be really excited. That is it for the Bolt Energy 51 volt 160 amp hour lithium golf cart battery installation into a club car precedent or club car onward. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will answer them as soon as I can. You can also call me at Palmetto Battery Pros, weekdays 9 to 5 Eastern. We are an authorized dealer for Bolt Energy USA, so if you'd like to purchase one of these batteries or have questions about the product, please give us a call. You can also shop online at palmettobatterypros.com. We assist our customers through the purchasing process, installation, and throughout ownership. As always, hit that like and subscribe button. We have more installation, unboxing, and review videos coming out in the near future. So we hope to see you next time. We appreciate you watching. Thanks, y'all.